topic is Newton's three laws of motion and they'll be there wherever you move. And I think his laws backfired on him because that apple seemed to have fall, fall, fell on his head. So let's start after that little joke. The first law of motion, which is also known as the law of inertia. Well, what does it say? The first law of motion states that every object will remain at rest or in motion unless an unbalanced force acts on it. So we'll move on for do some examples. Now, examples of the first law. Well, we have an example right here. Uh, if you just keep a football and nothing will happen, that's an object. So an unbalanced force arrives in the form of a foot and then it kicks it in one direction. So now the object is in motion and it will continue with constant speed and in that direction. And it won't stop unless an unbalanced force acts on it. In this case, it is the goalpost net, which is supposed to happen. So now in this picture, as you can see, this guy is driving a motorbike. He bumps into a ball, but the motorbike stops, but he goes hurtling forwards. Any idea why? Well, he goes hurtling forwards because of the inertia of motion. What is inertia of motion? Well, inertia of motion is the tendency of an object to stay in motion if it was initially in motion. So now it's time for real life demonstration. glass of water. So what I'm going to do is place the card on the glass and place the coin on the card. So now why am I doing this? Just observe. So did you see what happened? I pulled away the card really really fast and the coin fell in. Now why is this? This experiment is to depict Newton's first law which is also known as the first law of motion. So the Newton's first law states that if an object is at rest, it's going to stay re at rest unless an unbalanced force is acting on it. So now an unbalanced force is a force that um, like pushes or pulls in one direction but doesn't push or pull in the other. So there are examples like gravity and friction and stuff like that. So now we'll be uh, understanding how and why the coin fell in. So first of all, it's on the card. So you would think that it would go along with the card. Well, that's not the case because it's because of inertia. Inertia is the wanting of an object to stay at rest if it was initially at rest. So this coin is at rest. When I pull away the card, it wants to stay at rest. So it's just floating there in mid-air. And now gravity is an unbalanced force. It pulls down the coin into the cup. Part 2 to the first law of motion, believe it or not. Part 2 states that if an object is in motion, it would like to stay that way and it would go on forever unless again an unbalanced force like gravity or friction is acting upon it. You can look at this ball, it was moving and then it stopped because of friction. There's friction in this table, there's friction in the floor, there's friction everywhere we stand. So this ball stopped and if there was no friction it would have gone on to there and then it would roam the earth and come back to there. Yes, it So that's the real life demonstration. Let's move on. Now why is the first law important? The first law is important because objects cannot start, stop or change their direction by themselves. They need some sort of force acting on them from the outside to cause that change. Now it's time for the second law of motion, which is known as the real law of motion. And that's because the first law and the third law have a little bit of relation with it. So now, the second law states that, um, or rather describes, the relationship between an object's mass and the amount of force needed to accelerate it. Newton's second law is stated as F is equal to M multiplied by A, which means force is equal to mass multiplied by acceleration. So, uh, in my demonstration, I'm going to show you two like examples of understanding this second law first we have where force is proportional directly proportional to mass 
when acceleration is going to be kept constant. And in the other way, I'm going to show you how force is directly proportional to acceleration when the mass is kept the same. Now for some examples. These examples are different from the ones that I'm going to show in the, my demonstration. Very different in fact because these, uh, they interpret the second way of totally, like a totally new way of understanding the second law. It just still means the same but it's just a different formula. So Newton's second law, um, what happens here is as the force is going to be increased, the acceleration will increase. So here, as you can see, the mass is increasing, but the force is the same, by the way. Here, the force is increasing, but the mass is the same. Here, by the way, the force is going to be increasing. Or no, the force is going to be staying the same. As you can see, these arrows, even though they look shorter, they are the same but the mass is going to increase from 40 kg to 400 kg and then the acceleration will decrease as the mass increases. So now it's time for the demonstration. We're going to use this experiment to understand Newton's second law of motion. We will be needing a ball, a magnet and the setup which I won't explain because that's going to take some serious time. So what we're going to do is we're going to take this ball and we're going to drop it to this height. There will nothing happen with that, that tissue coat pen. I'm going to take the magnet and drop it from the same height. Now as you can see, the tissue, it, yeah, it got torn. So now why is that? That is Newton's second law of motion. Newton's second law of motion is that if the mass of an object is greater than the force it exerts on another object will also be greater. This ball has a lesser mass than this magnet. So when the magnet fell on the tissue, it broke it. But from the same height but when this ball fell from the same height it didn't break the tissue because its mass was less so now that's not all to newton's second law of motion we need the back of the tissue for this one so we can drop the magnet and only the magnet we don't need the ball anymore from this height and it didn't break but now if we increase the acceleration which is the speed of an object that increases with time so as you can see, it made a tear in the tissue. That's the tear. So, what happened was, the acceleration increased. So, the magnet, even though its mass was not enough to break the tissue, its acceleration helped you to break the tissue. So, that means that as acceleration increases, um, the force also increases. So, well, that's that. That's the second law of motion in a demonstration. So now, why is this law important? I'll just turn my video. So this law is important because it helps us understand the relationship between different forces and motion. It allows us to calculate the acceleration, and which also helps us to calculate velocity and the position of an object with some known forces. Now for the third and final law, which is also known as the law of action and reaction. This is simple. It just states that any for every actually, not any for any also any, but screw that. For every action or force, you could say in nature, there's an equal and opposite reaction. What that means is, um, well, we can understand it with some simple examples. In these examples, what is happening is the action is the air rushing out of the balloon. So we know that the force because it's rushing down in this direction. We could feel it, that's a force. So as it is rushing down in this direction, it would pu push the balloon in this direction because, and that would be the reaction, you see? So if you throw a ball at the ground, it bounces back up, uh, upward because of the third law. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. So ever wondered why if you hit a wall, for instance, it, your hand hurt? That's because of the third law. Well, the, we humans and animals are too strong for the third law. Well, not the third law, but whatever we are hitting, um, it can't push us back. We are too strong. So instead, we just get hurt. Now it's time for another real life demonstration. Actually, a few this time.
as you can see the balloons are falling down and then they are hitting the ground and the ground exerts the equal and opposite force which makes them go upwards. So right now for this example we are going to need a candle and a toothpick going through it and two glasses and a paper. So right now the candle is still but once I light both the ends look what will happen. I have lit both the sides and the candle seesaw has just begun so it's a little slow. And yes, it's gone a lot faster. What's happening here is that as the candle wax, which is melting, what it's doing is it is actually an action. So as it's falling, an equal and opposite reaction is taking place and it's pushing one side of the candle up. So the other side would go down as that candle is just one big candle lit on both ends. So then the other side melts and then that goes up. And then that happens with the other side and that's a whole big chain. So that's how the candle seesaw works. So those were two examples. One of a really squishy balloon uh, and the candle seesaw, which is one of the most exciting experiments As you can see, the balloons in the world. So now it's time for our last thing. Why is the third law important? Well, the third law is important because it helps us understand which forces are external to a system or an object. External forces are hereby important because they must be added together to find the total net force. So that's it for this um, project, you could say, or video, whatever. That's it for this project, guys. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.